Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're going to take a look at Solus KDE. This is an independent distribution based on the Linux kernel. But before we get started, please don't forget to like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and at the end of the day, if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you want to follow me on my socials, maybe buy me a cup of coffee, or better yet, become a patron to the channel over on Patreon, those links are in the description below. Solus OS. Let's go ahead and pull it up. Here's their website. Like I said, it's an independent distribution based on the Linux kernel. And when you go to their website, it just states it is an operating system that is designed for home computing. Every tweak enables us to deliver the cohesive computing experience. It's designed for everyone. It's ready to go. And you can donate down here if you want. If you go up top, you've got home, you've got about, you've got the blog, you've got the download. Let's click on download. They've got the Solus Edition. The main is in Budgie. You can get it in Gnome. You can get it in Mate. And you can also get it in Plasma. That's what we're looking at today, the KDE Plasma version. And then, of course, you've got funding, help center form, and get involved. Remember, if you download Solus, if you put it on a USB or throw it in a virtual machine or put it in Gnome boxes and you want to test drive it, that's awesome. If you decide to install it, do not forget the website. If you have issues of any kind, or if you've got problems, just don't start going and Googling things. Come back over to their website, go to forum, and you can come over here to their forum. And if you've got questions, get them questions answered here. This is a list of all discussions. It's got everything from building an alternative ecosystem, HTTP links and Firefox reporting partial encryption, unable to boot from live USB. So there's a lot of questions in here. ThinkPad, E15, third gen, freezes on boot. There's questions and you can get support in here. And if the question may have already been asked, if it hasn't, you can throw it in there and your question may help somebody else out. So don't forget this area right here. Definitely come back to the forum should you have any questions. So we're going to close out of their website. If you download Solus, throw it on a USB, put it in a virtual machine or open it up in GNOME boxes. This is the screen you're met with. It's very beautiful right off the bat. It's got some transparency down here. Let's open this up right over here. And that transparency carries over into the plasma theming. So first thing I want to do is right click. Let's see if we can change this background. Let's see what kind of choices we have. And you've got some beautiful choices right off the bat. You've got some dark ones. You've got some decent looking. You've got a kitty cat right there if you want a cat. you got a crab. Let's see. Let's find something with a little bit of. Do we want to go dark today or do we want to go artistic? I think we're going to go dark. Let's apply the dark wallpaper and close that out. That's a beautiful wallpaper. And you come down here. You've got one panel. You've got your date and time. Minimize all windows. And of course, you've got your hidden icons, which is your notifications, clipboards, night color control, battery and brightness. Lock keys and status and KDE Connect. If you're an Android phone user, go over to the Play Store, download the KDE Connect app. Once it's downloaded, you can sync it up right here with your desktop or laptop. That way, if you get messages or missed calls, you can get notifications right on your PC. Let's minimize that. You've got internet, you've got USB, and of course, you've got your volume settings. This is your panel. Let's right click on it. If you want to edit that panel, you can change the size of the panel if you want, make it a little bigger, make it a little smaller, whatever you want to do with it. You've got more options right here. Go ahead and click on more options. You got panel alignment. You can align it to the left, center, right. Visibility, you can have it always visible, auto hide. You can have it to where windows can cover it or windows go below it, however you want to adjust that. And then of course, the opacity of your panel, you can change it to adaptive, opaque, translucent. So there's options right there that you can change. And then over here, you can add widgets if you want. If you click on those, it brings up a whole list of widgets that you can add. Just a quick one. Let's try weather. Left click it, hold on it, drag it over to your desktop, put it right there. You can click configure. You can choose a location. Let's go NOAA. Let's go Dallas, Texas. And you could just pick love field, select it and apply. Now you've got a weather widget on your desktop if you want it there. And then you can drag it around, move it to where you want to. You can have a lot of time spent just customizing your desktop with widgets and things like that. So just wanted to show you that real quick. So let's back out of that. Okay, so back over here, you've got your software center. Let's go ahead and open that up. 
And because it is an independent distro, this software center is definitely going to be theirs. It's not going to be a knockoff of Ubuntu or anything like that. You've got your home. You've got desktop software and theming, gaming on Solus. You can click on gaming. You can pick arcade games, card games, role-playing games. Let's go back over. You've got system software. You've got 16 categories, kernel drivers, boot utilities, Xorg display. So there's a lot of different software that you can pull out of here. You've got office software, multimedia and graphics. Let's click on that. You've got graphics, audio software, video software. Let's go to video. Let's see what they have in video. Okay, there's OBS Studio. You could download it right there. There's Caden Live. There's GNOME MVP Player. There's a lot of different software and apps that you can download right here. And then you've got updates. You've got available updates. We're not going to do that at present. Then it'll show you what you have installed. Third party that you can install. Android Studio, Impass, Google Chrome, Google Earth, Google Talk. If you're somebody that wants to do Google, you can access it right there. Plex Media Center, Skype, Spotify. So there's third party apps you can just install with the click of a button, which is pretty nice. Or you could do a search if you wanted to search. Let's do something like Shotcut. Let's search. Shotcut is available, a free open source and cross-platform video editor. So let's click over there, details, change log, and you just click install right there. So that's their own little software center. I like it. Uh, I recommend that if you do download this and you throw it into a virtual box, boot it up from a USB, you do some investigating there. So let's close out of that. Then you got their file manager. Let's open that up. Should be Dolphin, and it is Dolphin. I like Dolphin. It's a nice file manager. It does have a lot listed over here. Now, if there are things over here that you don't want listed, you can, of course, hide them so they're out of your way, like recent files and recent locations. I'm not a big fan of that. So if you wanted to, you could just right click on it, hide the selection and it's gone. Search for, I can do a search right here through the whole thing. I don't need a specific area right here to do it. So I'll right click and hide that selection. And then you've got a little bit more room here. Now I like bigger icons right here. so. Come down here in this open area, right click. Let's go to icon size, small, medium. Let's go ahead and make those large. That makes them a little bigger so you can see them. You've got your usual suspects here, and then you've got your usual home folders right here. So that's Dolphin File Manager. It's customizable. If you wanted to change the order that these are listed in, you can. Let's say you wanted videos up top under home, drag it up and drop it. Pictures under videos, let's go ahead and drag that up and drop it. There you go. So you can adjust that or customize it to any way you want to. So let's close out of that. And we've already looked at Firefox. Let's go ahead and open up the app menu. You've got development, user feedback console. You've got graphics, which is GwynView, LibreOffice Draw, and Ocular. Then you've got internet. You've got Firefox, Conversation. You've got Thunderbird for your mail. KDE Connect, we've already talked about. Multimedia, you've got Alyssa, MPV, and SM Player. Office, you've got the LibreOffice Suite, which is pretty awesome right out of the box. And then settings, you've got hardware driver, install the OS, software center, system settings. Let's go check out system settings. Okay, system settings, you can come over here, look at it a little bit because it is KDE Plasma. You can make a lot of different changes to it. If you wanted to go to a light theme, just click on light theme and apply. And it changes everything over to a light theme. I'm going back to dark because that's the way I want it. If you want to change your wallpaper, you can do that right here as well. Clicking files or folders opens them or clicking them selects them. Now this, I like to switch it to selects them because I'm used to double clicking. I have for so many years. This makes you, if you select them, you got to double click to open it. But if you want to do a single click and it open it, all you got to do is leave it where it's at. Okay, let's click on over to appearance. Let's apply that. You come over to appearance and this lets you know what kind of theme you're presently running. At present, we're on Solus Dark, which is just fine. Now, if you look at these themes and think, I don't want any of these themes, what you can do, you can go down here to get new global themes and it'll open up a plethora of different themes that you can download. I myself like to go up here and choose highest rated. And once it loads up, you can see you got your highest rated ones right on top. There are thousands of these out there. You can really spend hours upon hours customizing your operating system, which is one of the things I love about KDE Plasma. So let's close out of that. Application style. It shows you the different application styles you can choose from. And then, of course, if you want to get different ones, you can download them. Plasma style. 
colors, window decorations, fonts. Now, what I like to do in fonts, adjust all fonts, and then click there, and then you can scroll down and make them bigger. I'm going to go ahead and pick 12 and click OK, and then I'm going to apply that. Everything across the system is bigger, so let's go ahead and close out of that. Now, let's go back down here. We were at settings, correct? Yes. Then system, you've got console, Dolphin. Let's take a look at console, and let's see what we're using for resources. Let's see if they have HTOP. They do not have HTOP. Let's try top. Top is running. At present, I have two gigabytes of RAM issued to this machine. We are running at 611 megabytes of the two gigs, which is pretty impressive, especially for a KDE Plasma desktop. That's pretty light. So Solace is definitely light on the resources. If you want to download it, throw it into a virtual machine or into GNOME boxes, you know you can assign it a couple gigs of RAM and get a good look at what's going on. So we'll go ahead and close out of that. All right. And then utilities, you've got emoji selector, Kate, which is your text editor, and then power session and typical log off. If you're definitely wanting to look at something that isn't Ubuntu based or isn't Arch based, and you want to take a look at an operating system that's independent, I would definitely zip on over to Solace's website and download it, throw it on a USB, put it in a virtual machine or throw it in GNOME boxes and give it a test drive. Tell me what you think of Solace OS down below in the comments. Before you leave today, please do me a favor. Like, subscribe, or follow my channel. doesn't cost anything, and at the end of the day, if you don't like me, you can always unsubscribe. If you want to follow me on my socials, maybe buy me a cup of coffee, or better yet, become a patron to the channel over on Patreon, those links are down below. Thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.